Welcome to this video on knowing your AP statistics formula sheet. This is the first in our review videos as we prepare for our AP or final exam. So before you start, you need to have printed out the formula sheet that's attached in the module um, or go to AP uh, College Board to download. Make sure you get the most recent one, which will say the AP Statistics 2020 Formulas and Table Sheet because it has changed from the years past. This is a new version. All right, so the order of our formula sheet is in the same order that we learned it, but it won't be in that order on the test. But I want you to go through and annotate your entire formula sheet. That way, as we're reviewing, you can look at all your annotations and it will help you remember it for when you're in the actual AP exam. So our first topic that we dealt with was descriptive statistics. So the formulas for descriptive statistics, X bar is the mean. And then this is S sub X is our standard deviation. Okay. These were one variable stats, so if you go into your calc calculator, enter the data, and um, run a one variable stat, you will find X bar and standard deviation in there, and you really don't need to run them by hand by yourself. So those are our one variable stats. Then this next section here, these are our two variable stats, so you would enter the data and list one and list two, and then press one ver two variable stats to get the information. What you're really looking for that's important is we have this formula here. This is our least square regression line. The Y hat, it's very important that you get the hat. That means the predicted Y. It's not the actual Y, it's the predicted value. And then remember that your A is your Y intercept and that your B is your slope. So when you pull them out of the calculator, it tells you A and B, and you just will plug them in. Um, right over here, we have the formula. It's not used very often. Pretty much the only time you're ever going to see this is on a multiple choice question, where they would have to give you X bar and Y bar. Um, and you would probably use these two formulas in conjunction. This formula down here is for slope. So to find the slope, you'll take the correlation coefficient and multiply it to the standard deviation of y divided by the standard deviation of x. Then you can take that information and plug it in in this top formula to come up with your least square regression lines. Again, very unusual to see this, um, and if you do, it will be only in your multiple choice is the most likely place. Okay, this big long formula here, this is your correlation. You will not ever need to calculate this by hand. It will either be given to you or you'll have the data so you can run your two variable stats and get your correlation coefficient. So I want you just to cross it off because you're not ever going to use that by hand for AP stats. So then we moved on into probability dis and distributions. So there are some notations here that might be different than what we used in class. You had the or notation. So this really says the probability of A or B. And when you're looking for A or B, that means you're adding them together. So to find the probability of A or B, you take A plus B. But if they have any overlap where A and B occur at the same time, so this is really the probability of A and B, you'll subtract it off because otherwise you're counting the probability of A and B twice and you only want to count it off, count it once so you'd end up subtracting it off. That's our overlap. Okay, then we have our conditional probability formula. So 
So our conditional probability formula says the probability of A given B has occurred. So that says the probability of A given B has occurred is where A and B are, A and B, divided by B. So when we're looking at a two-way table, so if we were looking at a two-way table, we would look for where A and B are divided by the table total. Okay, and you guys know how to do that pretty much. Um, it's just the formula can be helpful if they give you only some pieces and you have to solve for the missing piece. All right, some more about our distributions. We started talking about our discrete random variable X. And to find your discrete random variable X, um, a lot of times the mean is called an expected value. And sometimes that can be confusing. So that's an expected value. And here's your standard deviation. Now, the best way to get these is in your calculator in list one, I want you to put your outcomes. We'll talk more about calculator. So we got outcomes. In list two, you would put the probability and run one variable stats. And list two is your frequency list. And that will give you the mean of the, for this discrete random variable X. And it will also give you your standard deviation. Now the same will kind of work when we go over here for our binomials. These are really important. These should come up. So if X, your random variable X, has a binomial distribution with the parameters N and P, so N is the number of trials, and P is the probability of success, to remind you what all our notations mean, then we have that the probability that the capital X equals some number. So a binomial often will be asking the probability of an exact um, X successes, exactly three successes or three or less successes, but it's asking for a specific number. And then we have our formula. And so uh, in class, when we did this, we this N over X, this is not a division. It's not N divided by X. Remember, this was a combination N C X, but we can also use our calculator that will do it all for us and we'll do more a review on that during our calculator review. So you'll have a combination N choose X times the probability of success and how many successes are you exactly expecting times the probability of failures with how many failures are you expecting. So the mean here is just N times P, your number of trials times your probability of success and that is often also called your expected value. And then our standard deviation is pretty easy to use, n times p times 1 minus p. So number of trials times the probability of success times the probability of failure. Okay. So that's our binomial. And remember, we had our bits for um, binomial. Is it binomial? Is it independent? Is the number of trials set? And do you have the same success, probability of success each time? And then we had geometric, and geometric was bins. It was a slightly different, it's still binomial, independent, number of trials is not set. And really it's the number of trials till first success. So we want the probability of first success. So your number of trials isn't set ahead of time because who knows how long it can take to get those number of successes, okay? Um, and so this is also in your calculator, but it's the number of failures and how many times we would expect that and then the probability of success. So the probability of failures, your variable, your exponent on that is always one less because you would fail, 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 and the first time you succeed. So it's always one less. 
to find your mean, it's 1 divided by the probability of success. And then we have our standard deviation, the probability of failure, the square root of the probability of failure divided by the probability of success. All right, and then we went into our inference section. So these formulas, these are our general formulas. Throughout the class, we would write the general formula in words because that's what was on our formula sheet. And so then you'll take these and we'll go on to the back and you'll have to pick the information from the back to plug into these formulas. So the standardized test statistic, that's what we used for our significance tests. And so here we had a Z or a T statistic minus parameter divided by the standard error of the statistic. And then we had our, for our confidence interval, we had our statistic, which was the point estimate from our sample, plus or minus a critical value. Your critical value was your Z star or your T star times the standard error of the statistic. And then our last was our chi-squared statistic, where you would take the sum of the observed minus expected squared divided by your expected. Okay, so those are the general formulas. On the back, we're going to flip this over, and that's where you get what you need to pick to plug into those general formulas. Let's turn this over. All right, on the back here, for our sampling distributions, the first ones that we talked about was the sampling distribution for proportions. And we had two kinds. We had one sample and we had two sample. Okay, and that helps you with your procedure names. For the one sample, the mean of the sampling distribution for p hat is the same as the population proportion. So this section here, these two formulas are talking about the sampling distribution of p hat. Okay. And so they'll describe your mean and your standard deviation. And then the standard error, this comes from your um, sample, because in case you don't have the population proportion. So these two formulas, these two standard errors, you're most likely to use those with a confidence interval. Okay. And so the difference is this is for a one sample, this is for two samples. And when you have a two sample, that was our sampling distribution um, for p hat 1 minus p hat 2. Okay. So these are for confidence intervals. We had a very special thing that happened with our tests. So we did something we called it pooling. We pooled our information when we talked about our significance tests for the difference of proportions. And the purpose of that was because we were assuming that P1 equals P2, that there was no difference between them. And therefore, um, we pooled to create this one group. Okay, so we're gonna use, this, use only uh, for uh, for your two sample Z test for P1 minus P2. Okay, so it's only that's the only time you pull. Every time else, you're going to use these the rest of this information as it's written up here. So that was a special situation. Okay, after proportions, we talked about means. So our sampling distribution for means, again, we have our one sample and our two sample. And then, so for our mean, you assume the mean of the sampling distribution is the same as the popula population distribution. So right here, we have the sampling distribution for X bar.
and then for two samples, we assume the mean difference, the difference in means is same as the population. So this is a sampling distribution for x bar 1 minus x bar 2. There's no pooling that has to have come into effect. And you can remind yourself when you come back and reference your um, formulas back here. These are the standard errors. It's the standard deviation that comes built from a statistic number. And so you're going to use these in um, confidence intervals and significance tests. Intervals and significance tests. And there is no difference between which one you need to use other than one's for one sample and the other is for two sample. No pooling involved. Then our very last thing that we talked about was the sampling distribution for a simple linear regression. Okay. And so in here, a same, you're assuming the slope of the line is the same as the slope for the population least square regression line. And this part over here is very unusual to be used. Um, you would be, it'd be very rare to calculate. You would be most likely to be given some information. And so the more likely part that you're going to have to do is pull this out from a mini tab output. And let me remind you about mini tabs. So this information you're not likely to calculate. More than likely, it's going to come from one of these computer outputs that we've talked about previously, where you had your constant was your y-intercept, and below it was always your slope. You got your standard deviation of the residuals, your standard error of the slope, you got t-scores, you got p-values, all of those are coming out of these tables and you're not, so you're not going to be, the standard error for the slope would be th this formula, we are not likely to have to calculate that, you're going to be pulling the information from that table of values. So hopefully that was very helpful and you've got your formula sheet all marked up and you're ready to begin your review process and I'll see you in class.